Good morning. I did finish all of the kielbasas last night. I made myself do it. So they've been sitting in the fridge overnight. However, I realized that I probably should have put paper towels underneath because the bottom sides are still like wet. So I'm just gonna do that now um, and they can go back in the fridge. Actually, I'm gonna flip them over, put paper towels underneath so that the bottom side can be facing up for a couple more hours. And then I need to get the Hungarian sausage stuffed and um, resting as well. So that's the plan for this morning and then we will get them on the smoker this afternoon. So the deal with these is they really should be hanging, but I don't have enough room in my refrigerator to hang them, much less have something to hang them from. <laughs> I'm sure what that would look like. So we are just making do with what we can. And they definitely seem to have dried out pretty well on the uh, tops where they were open to the air. So I think we will be fine. And I think part of the reason that you do this overnight too is just for flavor. I'm going to do this easy way. Even though it totally is dirtying another dish. That's all right. Aha. Perfect. All right. These will go back in the fridge and the other sausage will come out to get stuffed. So I figured out a couple of things yesterday, last night. <laughs> Uh, it's super helpful to have one of these to get all of the air out in the um, as it goes down into the actual mechanism. Um, otherwise, for some reason, it gets this weird suction thing and it, it, you have to push really hard to get it through. Um, not while it's on. This is just to get it stuffed in there before you turn it on. Um, so that's super helpful. And then, well, I guess that's the only other thing. Oh, no, the other thing I figured out is that um, it, even though the directions on the package say to put it on a paper towel, I found that they were ripping the ones that I did that with, but the ones that I kept in the bowl with just a little bit of water did much better. So I just now keep them wet in a bowl until I actually need to use them. So then the other thing is I had just this small amount, it's probably enough for one um, kielbasa. So we're going to start with that guy and then get going with the rest. But let me just show you how. So basically, shove some in there, and then you just shove it down with the chopstick, and it makes it, I don't know, just gets the bubbles out easier than trying to do it with the actual, um, I don't know what that thing's called. Stuffer thingy, stuffer. All right, and you have seen this whole process, so I'm not gonna show it to you again. We'll come back when these are all done. All right, all of the Hungarian sausages are completed as well. Looking beautiful. So I'm going to set them out now and let them just basically get dry to the touch and then everything is gonna go into the smoker. We probably are gonna have to do two rounds because uh, I think there's way too many kielbasas to, I think the kielbasas will fill up David's smoker even with as large as it is. So um, we might have to do these a separate time, but that's not a problem. All right, just separating these a little bit so have. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, eh, I'll do one more. All right. There we go. And then I'm gonna um, replace this paper towel. So I'll just stack these guys on here for a second. And then, do, 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 do. again, this made way more than, well, I guess it would have been 12 sausages. Yeah, I'm just not sure how he counts making sausages. 
to only say that a, one recipe makes eight. Uh, yeah, I have way more than that. I know we did a recipe and a half, but still it just should only be 12 then. And it is more than 12. And I think I made pretty sizable sausages. So it's not like I was being skippy. I don't know. I had much better luck with uh, this round of the casings. Hardly had any breakage. In fact, I think I only had one break, which is amazing. So definitely, at least with this brand, you want to um, keep them wet, even though it says not to. But I'll order them again, because yeah, I think they did really well. And I will cut off these extra long ends. Perfect. And this one kielbasa, I'll just put with the other kielbasas. All right. I have just a little tiny bit of the Hungarian sausage left that was like inside the stuffing apparatus still. Um, so I'm actually going to fry it up into a little sausage patty and see how it tastes. But for now, we are going to get these in the smoker. I'll show you as they're going on and when they come off and we will do a taste test. All right, I have my little Hungarian sausage patty here. Let's give it a taste. And it's going to taste completely different because it will be smoked, but at least we'll get an idea. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that's good. Oh my goodness. Mm. You guys, you have to try this. It's so amazing. Yeah, this is definitely excellent. Can't wait to taste it with smoke on it. David snuck the kielbasas on when I wasn't looking, but there they are, getting nice and smoked. They are looking beautiful. As I said, we will have to do the Hungarian sausages in a separate batch. And actually, I totally read the recipes while well, I mixed them up. The kielbasa did not need to sit overnight. The, it was the Hungarian sausage that needed to sit overnight in the fridge. So we will let it sit overnight in the fridge and we will smoke it tomorrow since there's not room on the smoker today anyway. Uh, but I'm looking forward, we're definitely having them for dinner tonight. Looking forward to that. We'll show you what they look like coming off. Guys, it is the next, next day. <laughs> so now we're on day three. But um, I, as I told you, uh, we had to wait for the Hungarian sausage to rest overnight after it got stuffed. So. They have been on the smoker this morning. Actually, now it's, it's afternoon. Um, and they've just come off, but there's two different methods for doing this. So here is what the kielbasas ended up looking like. Beautiful. And they are super tasty. We had them for dinner last night. Um, and these are the Hungarian sausage that have just come off the smoker. You want them to get to an internal temperature of 154 to 158. And you can do it on the smoker, but it takes a long time. Like I think the kielbasas were on the smoker for probably close to six hours yesterday. Um, but like at a certain point, it's not gonna it, take in any more smoke. So you don't need it to be on the smoker. So the other method is to bring them in when they're, after a couple hours, two hours, two, three hours, bring them in, even if they're not at temperature, and then you poach them in 167 to 168 degree water. So I have a pan here and I'm just paying attention to the temperature, about 145. And then, yeah, we just will put those in here until they reach 154 to 156. And then we pull them out, put them in some cold water or just spray them with cold water to cool them down. And that's it. And the difference will be, well, we'll see. 
it'll be interesting to see actually, since the others were on the smoker the whole time, they should actually not get quite as wrinkly. They should kind of plump up just a little bit. Um, so that'll be interesting to see, but we will get them into the water here in just a few minutes. All right, the temperature is at 167 on the dot. That's kind of crazy. Um, so now I'm just gonna put these guys in here and I actually turned the burner off. He said he typically doesn't need it to be on. Um, it, it, it brings them up to the correct temperature just with the water being at the temperature it currently is. And these are, these are quite warm. They're like around 140-ish degrees. So it's not like I'm putting cold sausage in there. Might have to do two batches. We're gonna have so much sausage. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am cutting off these uh, long guys here. <clears throat> They're all in here now, so we're just going to hang out here. What does it say? Um, 20 to 30 minutes for 10 pounds. Yeah, and this isn't 10 pounds, so. All right, so we will be back to check it in 20 minutes and see what the temperature's at. In the meantime, my plan is to um, put these in, vacuum seal them to put them in the freezer. So I have my handy little vacuum sealer guy here. I'm just going to make some bags um, that will fit them. I think I'm gonna have to go long wise because they're not, a lot of them aren't gonna fit lengthwise or widthwise in the bags. I might check and see if we have a different width of this bag, actually. Let me go check. I did find wider bags, which is awesome. So I cut one and we're just putting two sausages in each one because there's just two of us and if we need more, we can grab a second bag. Um, and this bag is a little bit big. Like I would be able to easily get it under there. So maybe make them that much smaller. But if you recall last time when I was doing the corn, I don't wanna make them too small because then I will just fight with them the entire time. <clears throat> I should count how many sausages I have so I know how many bags to make. But I know I need at least probably 10. They are done. So it took probably close to, yep, um, closer to 40 minutes total. And I did have to turn the heat back on, but they are looking lovely. So I'm just gonna get them all out of the water and then I we will compare the actual look of them with the kielbasas. I almost forgot I was supposed to be sticking these in cold water. I have cold water. I just rinsed the other ones that I had already pulled off um, under cold water for a couple seconds, so they should be fine. And basically, you want them to get to 160, I think, um, and just the carryover cooking, even with putting them in the cold water, um, gets them there. In here, there it is. Oh, oh, there's another one. Can't see because this water is, is all red from the paprika. Okay, well, that's all of them.
Don't they look pretty? I mean, not really, but they smell delicious. All right, here they are. And I would definitely say that these are the Hungarian sausage that got poached and these are the kielbasas that did not. So definitely it does plump them up. So it would have been interesting to um, do some of these um, poached and then taste them and see what the difference is, but maybe I'll do that next time, which is probably gonna be three years from now because we have so much sausage here. So I have, uh, I believe I counted 21 here and there are 37, no, 35, 36, yeah, 37 of the kielbasas. So yeah, we have a lot. But as I said, um, I'm just going to package them all up in vacuum pack bags and get them in the freezer. I'm pretty excited because we did finally get a new little chest freezer. It's, a, it's small, it's like a seven cubic foot one, but we didn't need that much extra space. Um, you know, I'm not planning to get a side of beef or a half a pig anytime soon. So until we do that, uh, we don't need a big, huge, chest freezer, but we totally needed some extra space. So I have that now. And uh, well, the tomatoes that are currently in the freezer that holds all of our meat will go into the new freezer and these will go into the meat freezer. But I hope you enjoyed our little sausage making adventure and learned a little something along with me. <laughs> um, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.